So you've built up your three-step framework that realtors can now look at, refer to at any point in time to say, what would Shane do right now? And every time they do that, every time they come to engage in your content, you're reinforcing the fact that you are the professional, which then leads to the next stage where after they've actually seen your content, after they've engaged with it, after you've helped them out a bunch of times for free, the next stage is for them to get your full program, full access. It's free. All they have to do is join your team at EXP. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Real Marketer Podcast. Every week, I coach a new realtor to help them find their next big opportunity to scale their business by leveraging Inabox's three-part scale engine framework. What does this framework provide? A brand that sells systems and automations that'll help you accomplish more with less energy and lead generation strategies that are built to scale. Each week, we leverage the scale engine framework to guide the conversation and provide practical, actionable advice. Our goal at Inbox and the Real Marketer Podcast is to help realtors scale their business and achieve phenomenal success in their careers. So whether you're just starting out or you've been in the industry, you'll find value in these coaching sessions. Join us every week as we speak with realtors from all over the country and help them take their careers to the next level. And today we're joined by Shane. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, If you wouldn't mind, just give us a quick high level overview. Who is Shane? What's going on in your business? What's going on? Yeah, I guess the the high level is I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, first of all. Um, so I've been in real estate since 2008, was an investor for many of those years. And I just basically turned into a realtor, mainly doing the retail side of things at the end of 2019. And then COVID hit, I moved to a new area um, and then I'm just kind of rebranded myself and everything like that. And now I'm at the growing stages where I need to get more people Um, because I'm getting more leads and I just want to scale things up and go to that next level. So now you're, you moved from Milwaukee and now you're in a new market, right? Well, so I I was in Madison. Now I'm right smack between Madison and Milwaukee. So I'm about 45 minutes away from Madison, Wisconsin and 45 from Milwaukee. So I'm kind of in a little bit of a smaller community. Okay. And so that community is called Madison or you're in another place? I'm in Oconomowoc. (laughs) Okay. I don't usually say that one because yeah, everyone's like, oh, well, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. So what, like, where do you generally speaking operate? I'm uh, typically in Oconomowoc. They, they call it Lake Country area. There's a lot of lakes right here. Um, so that's kind of where I focus. I try to focus as much as I can within this like 20 minutes, half hour radius. Um, my marketing takes me a lot of other places because people don't look for Oconomowoc because no one knows how to spell it, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> so they look for like Milwaukee or Madison and then, uh, kind of go from there so you you would basically take both of those locations as well like you'd operate both of them yeah and what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to actually grow my team more to just refer those out that's my goal is to i don't want to go more than 20 30 minutes away from my house anymore okay so the idea basically for what you've got going on is you've already got these leads coming in and it's a little bit too much for you to manage at the moment so you're looking for quality real estate agents to actually go ahead and take those and then you can scale by being a team leader or broker right Correct. Correct. Okay. So the fact that you mentioned that you're in a new market, you're actually still operating in the same markets that you were operating in beforehand, right? For the most part. Yeah. That's where a lot of my leads are still coming from is those old markets. And that's why I want to split those off. Right. Okay, fine. So the, the old leads that you were getting are more from, just so I understand, more of the leads that you were getting were from Milwaukee. And now more you're from Madison. For, so, more from Madison. And now yeah. you're looking for more leads inside of Lake Country. Correct. Okay, I got you. I got you. So when you mentioned your rebrand, what did you mean by that? Well, um, we switched companies. I had my own brokerage. We would actually moved over to a different brokerage now. I'm part of a nationwide team a little bit. Um, and we've been focusing a lot more on YouTube, change the, change the team name, stuff like that. So just trying to uh, make all that make sense now. <laughs> so. So now you are with, which brokerage are you currently with now? I'm with EXP now. Okay. So you switched from having your own brokerage to joining EXP. Yep. Right. So that was kind of the rebrand of what was going on. And now what you're looking to do is essentially double down on that, not EXP brand, meaning meaning promoting EXP, but now you are in EXP. And now you're trying to basically promote yourself from scratch, generate a whole bunch of leads, and then hand those off to your, uh, to your agents underneath you. Correct. And then obviously grow, you know, more, more uh, business right by me as well. Okay. So local business and getting your name out there as much as possible. Correct. 
Okay. So what was the, uh, I guess, what enticed you about YouTube? Uh, just it was, what else? I mean, that's where I always go, right? Like if I need to know anything, how to do anything, I go to YouTube typically and look stuff up there. Um, so that was kind of the big thing. And then the fact of we did have a YouTube channel in Madison that was bringing in quite a few people, um, whether it was renters. A lot of them came in as renters. And then I just kind of put on my CRM, follow up with them, and then they kind of buy a year to two years down the road. Okay. So we're looking basically for that around Lake Country. So can you describe Lake Country a little bit for me? I've obviously never been to Lake Country in Wisconsin. Like, what does it look like? What's the appeal of it? Yeah, I mean, it's not in a big city. So it's like small towns, 15,000 people is a lot of the little towns around here. Um, it's, I think there's like seven, eight lakes right in this little area. Um, so it's more of like a postcard town. When you, when you think about like small town USA, this is kind of like where we're at. And then there's like a bunch of them, you know, within five, 10 minutes of each other. Yeah. Um, that they kind of join in. Like the type where there's a Hallmark movie made in. Uh... Yeah, pretty much. Actually, the, in downtown Oconomowoc, uh, they filmed Wizard of Oz. So we have like the Wizard of Oz characters in the, on the main street and everything. So that's kind of really funny. cool. <laughs> That's really cool. I always, I, one of my favorite kind of reels is like when they they do parodies, making fun of what these super predictable movies always are. And one of my favorite one of the Hallmark movies where it's like you're working in a big office in like downtown New York. And it's like, if you don't get this big deal in the next three days, then you're fired. And they go, I have to get away. And then they go and they meet their long, whatever. It's like Sweet Home Alabama kind of thing. I love that. <laughs> right. Um, okay, good. So basically the idea is what we're looking for is to kind of generate that local business in Lake Country. Um, and you mentioned also getting more quality realtors on the team. If we had to identify one of those between either getting more realtors, more good realtors on your team or becoming more well-known in your market, where would you say that would be in terms of prioritizing those two? Uh, my biggest goal, I think, right now is getting more realtors on my team, um, especially, you know, once I get out 45 minutes. If I can get them about the 45 minute mark, that way we can cover more ground. Cause I do get, like I said, I, I know that when people search, they don't search for Lake country. They don't search for Oconomowoc. They're usually searching either Madison market or Milwaukee market. Mm -hmm. um, and then they kind of come to this area some way, shape or form. Um, so even when I look up on YouTube and things like that, I look for the searches and how much searches are going on for this area. There's just, there's not the traffic there. So I do end up marketing a lot more to the cities and, you know, then that can go any direction, right? So it's 45 minutes of downtown Milwaukee. Well, if they go North now I'm an hour and something or whatever. So it's getting those realtors in place is my big priority so that I can service people when they do come. Um, and I guess that's, that's kind of where my focus is right now. What's the appeal of Lake country over Madison and Milwaukee? Like who's moving to Lake country? Um, you know, it's, it's people that are tired of the cities. Uh, you know, there's been a kind of a big push to get out on the bigger cities and stuff like that, you know, and uh, that's kind of why we moved is just to get outside of the cities and go back to kind of the small town. I grew up in a small town, so I kind of like the feel of this, but so that's been kind of a big push in, in that. So. so if you were exclusively getting business inside of Lake Country, let's say nobody from Milwaukee or nobody from Madison is calling you, are, would you still be let's say, as urgently in need of better realtors to be working with you or underneath you? Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, I do a lot of other businesses too, besides real estate. So it's kind of a, uh, so that takes some of my time as well. So I'm just trying to free up more of my time um, rather than, and honestly, I just, I don't like working with, how do I put this? <laughs> um, I like sellers. I don't necessarily want to do a lot of buyers. Yeah. So for me, I'm, I'm very decisive. I bought and sold about 150 of my own homes. So when I go into a place, it's like, it's all nuts and bolts to me, right? There's not the emotional attachment. And that makes it sometimes hard for me to relate with like first time home buyers sometimes for me, because like, you know, they're like worried about, oh, it's a paint color. I don't like that paint color. And I'm like, okay, fine, buy it. I'll paint it for you while you're at closing. I'll go paint that wall for you quick. Yeah. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm, I like more, I don't like the day to day. I like the... I'd much rather work with the realtor side, grow my team and show them how to, you know, work with them to work with the buyers and sellers, especially the buyer's side more. If that makes, does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. Sense? Absolutely. So a couple of things, first, first off, you've had for yourself, like as a solo agent, you've had a successful career as a real estate agent, right? Yes. 
And so there's plenty of you, there's plenty that you'd be able to offer to folks who let's say would work underneath you. Like you'd have plenty of opportunities when it comes to training and coaching. Like there's, there's opportunity there for agents who want to actually succeed to be working underneath you. Right. Yes. Okay. So what I'm trying to basically figure out is, is the need for new agents there because you're still getting too much business from places that you don't want to be working? Or is it that even if you weren't getting that business and let's say you were only getting business in Lake country, like exactly where you wanted it to be. And you were getting enough business to keep you very happy, very busy, very successful, everything like that. Like, would you still be needing those realtors? I'm just trying to get to the root problem. Right. No, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to have to think about that one a little bit. Cause yeah, that just because of the fact that I don't know right now, I don't have enough business here to have, you know, a big team yeah. that, would make sense if it was just Lake Country. But the fact of, like, I have such a wide sphere that I do get a lot of people in other areas. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe if I, you know, if I could, I don't want to turn them away either because I spent so much of my life in some of these other areas, you know, an like hour away. I don't necessarily want to turn them away either. I'd rather, you know, capitalize on that event, mm -hmm. send them to somebody else that I know and trust that would take care of them. But yeah, if I was getting enough business in Lake Country, eventually I would still want to grow my team. Just because at some point I see me stepping away more from this business. Um, I'm always kind of future casting that, yes, I'm in real estate right now, but is that, do I want to work with buyers and sellers for the rest of my life? Maybe, yeah. maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I have ADD. So yeah, maybe, maybe two years from now, I'll be like, oh, I don't want to do that no more. I want to, you know, grow my chicken farm here or something. I don't know. So. I got you. You're in the right industry. I'm telling you, we're like a, we're like a beacon for ADD or ADHD people. So good job there. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I suppose what I'm what I'm thinking also is like when it comes to growing your team, building up your downline from EXP, like as I guess is a side hustle sort of thing. Is that something that genuinely appeals to you or is it mostly just I want to grow my team so that I don't have to worry about working with buyers 45 minutes away? I mean, there's definitely both of that. Like I don't I don't go out recruiting because a lot of EXP agents, you know, they're more nationwide they're recruiting from all over the place because they know if they cast a net big enough, they'll get some fish in there. Yeah. Um that's fine for me. That's not really why I, want, I got into it. That's not really why I joined EXP. Actually, it's one of the reasons why I didn't join EXP for years is because I kind of hated uh, people calling me all the time. I Sometimes five, seven times a week, I get a call saying, hey, come join us. You're going to make tons of money sitting on your hands doing nothing. So I, I kind of don't like going after that side of it. Yes. But I definitely want in Wisconsin, I want to focus on that because I know that area. I know I know that I can help them better there because I know the contracts in and out. I know the laws in and out. Um, so it's a little bit easier for me to be like the all um, encompassing person for them. I so, understand. Yeah. There's two different avenues that I'm thinking right now. And this is why I'm kind of harping on this point. There's two directions that I think this could go. And this is also why I think understanding the core problem is so vital for this is that the one channel that we could go is if let's say the goal is for you to have a team of agents working underneath you that you can scale by that. And that is the goal. That is the priority. Then the direction that we need to be going is how do we essentially brand you as a coach, as a mentor, as a guide that as many agents will look at and look up to as possible and then actually join your ecosystem, whatever that looks like. That's a really simple problem to find that that's basically what I do all the time in my own business. That's not a, it takes a lot of work, just a heads up, but it, 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 it's there. The systems are done. The other direction is if let's say the whole reason that you want to actually build a team is so that you don't have to work with leads that are sapping all of your energy and all of your time. And therefore, you'll have more time and energy for people that are local that are more profitable for you. Then there's no reason to invest so much time and energy into building yourself as a coach and as an authority and as a guide. Instead, you can set up your own, let's say, for example, referral program with a few select agents that you really know, like, and trust. And that way you don't have the hassle or energy or stress or overhead of managing and training these people. Instead, you can just offload your leads and business onto them, make a quick 50%. And then get back to work on building your local market and your local sphere. So those are the two channels that I'm looking at. And that's why I think it's so important to understand is, is the goal to build your empire or is the goal to stay local and stay simple? And, and that's a great question. Um, I, I kind of like both avenues of that. Um, I can see, you know, obviously with the XP, with the downline system that they have, 
there is that building the downline, building that the passive revenue stream, right? That's what we all kind of want is the yeah. mailbox money or whatever. You, um, I'm old enough to call it mailbox money yet. <laughs> but, um, so I guess we call yeah, it like so, e-transfer money. That would be the young right, version of mailbox money. Right. Venmo money or something yeah. right now. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I mean, I had a bunch of rentals and stuff like that. So it was, you know, always mailbox money, we called it. So there's that side of it that I do want to grow. Mm -hmm. Um, there's the referral side of it that I do want to grow. I kind of want to grow it all. I'm just, and maybe that's why it's not working for me. Yeah. Maybe as, as much as I like is because I'm kind of doing a little bit here, a little bit there and in lack of better terms, I'm kind of half butt in both sides. Right. And I'm not yes. where I'm not focused hundred percent where I should be. Um, instead I'm kind of doing a little bit here and then a little bit there and then my focus gets scattered. So I, I get what you're saying on how to, you know, really dive into one. Yeah. And the other one will probably come either way, either way that I go, really. Um, right. The other will start coming. And I like how you kind of position that because that's basically all of what I do. Everything that I do is when you reach one success, it scales into the next one and turns into a snowball. Like that's the idea is that if, if we're going to basically discuss a strategy and it just ends when you finish implementing it, then it's not really so scalable. So what we're looking for is to do something that you can then continue on and build off of that success to get to the next success. And so, I'm, I'm kind of thinking there's three things that we, we could be doing, like, I guess, three big projects that are overarching that we could look at. But just in terms of making sure that I'm ordering them and prioritizing them correctly, let me ask, is current money something that is a high priority for you? Like, are you trying to make more money now? Or are you trying to step out of the business and make easier, more scalable money now? Um, right now, I could probably do more money. Yeah. make things a little bit easier for some of the other things. Yeah. Okay. So this is how I would go about this, I think, right now. I think there are three overarching projects that need to be worked on. And I think in this order, the first thing that needs to be done is you need to make sure that you have more time and energy to focus on making more money more scalably and predictably, which means that you got to stop working with these transactions and these buyers that are just taking so much out of you. And right. I think that the thing that requires basically zero energy and effort on your part requires a lot of discipline though, is to have the, I guess, uh, discipline, like I said, to hand these leads off to somebody else. So get somebody that's not on your team. If you don't have anyone on your team, if you do have someone on your yeah. team, then perfect. Just give it to them. If you don't, then, then refer it off to somebody else and feel free to ask for any referral fee that you'd like. Like you don't have to ask for 25%. You literally generated these leads. And even if these this lead came really quickly and easily to you, like you've been in a market, you said, I, I know it's bouncing around with different roles in there, but you've basically been in real estate since 08. So you've been in real estate for 14 years. So if a lead just comes over to you, don't make the mistake of thinking that that lead came to you overnight. It took 14 leads right. years for that lead to come to you. And so- you're well within your rights, as much as brand new agents might be upset to hear this, but you're well within your rights to ask for 50. Honestly, I don't want to be brazen, but I would say 75% to a brand new agent that just needs the experience and a quick buck, depending on the size of the house, right? Like 25% of a hundred thousand dollar house is, is not really going to be anything for them. But if you're getting $500,000 transactions, there's no reason that you can't ask for 60% of that as the agent that's kind of referring it out, 50%, I think is more than reasonable for that agent. And that way, now you have a lot of time back into your mm -hmm. life to focus very specifically on the next two things. So that is a very simple, quick fix that requires no effort, no energy, but a lot of discipline. Does that sound like something that you'd be okay doing? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. I think the next two things, and I'm not 100% sure about how I would prioritize them, but the next two things are, number one is we need to make you well-known and respected in the market as a real estate mentor and coach. And that's before anybody even starts working with you. Right. So there's almost like two brands that we're going to be building simultaneously. The great news is that the great news is that the two brands that we're going to be building simultaneously, you can leverage to help the other one and, and elevate right. the other one. So for example, we're trying to build your brand as the agent in Lake country. And we're going to get to how you, I know you said that the searches aren't really so high for that. Don't worry about that. We'll, we'll address that in a moment, but you're building your brand as the agent or as the authority agent in Lake country. And you're also trying to build your brand as the authority agent in Wisconsin. Those are the two things that right. you need to do. 
And the fact that eXp has an ecosystem already built out and set up for you to distribute your knowledge, let's say very simply across the board to any agent that decides to join your ecosystem, the fact that they've simplified it makes it just that much easier. So now that we've kind of addressed number one of just referring those leads out, what I would say is as follows. The second thing that we need to do is we need to start working really hard and diligently to build your authority as a coach and as a mentor. And so this is literally like I would go ahead and watch guys, watch all of my videos that I've done, watch folks like Tom Ferry, Brandon Mulrennan, Ricky Carruth, all of those guys. And you're essentially going to be the next version of that. And there are some things for you to know. The first thing is to be seen as an authority. It's so much easier when you have a proprietary framework. So it doesn't have to be something that is so magnificent and not count and, and counterintuitive that nobody could have thought about it. For example, my three-part framework is brand automate scale. I didn't like break people's brains when I said that for the first time. It seems fairly simple, but I've broken it down in a way that's really digestible. Brand and inside of brand is identity messaging and marketing. Automate and inside of automate is capture, nurture, convert right? Scale and inside of scale, otherwise known as lead gen is organic lead gen, hybrid lead gen and paid lead gen. So I broke it down and I literally wrote the book on this. So now if somebody's listening to, for example, this podcast and they like what we're saying and they think, wow, that guy really knows what I was talking about. They know that as we're talking, all I'm ever doing is referring back to my framework, which immediately makes me look like the expert. So I think that by building that framework, you're instantly looking like the expert. And now the next step is now that you would look like the expert to anybody if they see you, the question is, how do you get more people to actually see you? This is where the challenge, this is where the, not challenge, I would say, this is where the hard work actually comes in because there's no wrong answer to this. Like there's no, it's not like you should only be posting this amount per day. Like the reality is, is the more, the better. So if you could have a YouTube, hypothetically, if you could have a YouTube channel, a podcast, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all of that jazz Facebook group is a great one, by the way, that would be ideal. The unfortunate reality is that you only have 24 hours in a day. And what we're trying to get back is our time. So I would say essentially build up this framework that you've got. That, that you can create a Shane's proprietary, give it a name, right? Let's call it the Wisconsin Amplifier Framework for Realtors, let's just say. So you've built up your three-step framework that realtors can now look at, refer to at any point in time to say, what would Shane do right now? And every time they do that, every time they come to engage in your content, you're reinforcing the fact that you are the professional, which then leads to the next stage where after they've actually seen your content, after they've engaged with it, after you've helped them out a bunch of times for free, the next stage is for them to get your full program, full access, and it's free. All they have to do is join your team at EXP. Makes sense. So that is the that is the best way for the coaching one. Now, now just a heads up, that actually will require a fair amount of work from you because, like I said, it takes right. a lot of time and energy to upkeep every all of these channels, right? YouTube, podcasts, Instagram. However, however, like I mentioned earlier. One thing that I'm really big into is once you've done one thing successfully, figure out how you can repurpose that so that you're working less. So this podcast, for example, is the same podcast that is going to be streamed live into my Facebook group. It's going to go onto Spotify. It's going to go onto YouTube. I'm then going to break it down into multiple shorter YouTube clips for my YouTube channel. And I am also going to break it down into shorter 45 second clips for my Instagram reels and Facebook reels. So this one hour long or 45 minute long, however long it's going to take podcast addresses each of those things. And if I wanted right. to get really fancy, I'll send an email out to my database saying new episode out with Shane. I'm going to recap what we spoke about. And then there you go. So now with this one episode, I'll have Instagram, YouTube, podcast, uh, email marketing, Facebook group, everything is taken care of just with this one video, but it all starts with that process that you've built out. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, before I get to the final step, what are your thoughts about that? Does that sound like it's a little bit overwhelming or does it sound like something that you'd be interested in diving into? Um, I'm kind of a workaholic, so I like diving into everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, so then just as a matter of, you know, making sure that I'm staying focused on what I should be on because, you know, obviously we're pretty good as entrepreneurs to get into the minutia, get into the yes. stuff where we do a lot of crap that, you know, should be hired out to somebody else. Yep. Um, 
and those kinds of things. So it's like just making sure, like, am I using my time how I should be using it? Because we like to be busy, I think, sometimes more than we like to be productive. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better. I mean, we always like confuse business with busyness and they are not the same thing, obviously. Right. So it's really important, again, to consistently be asking yourselves, what's the root problem that I'm trying to solve? And that's why I was so intense about what's really going on here. Are you trying to build up your brand as a coach or are you trying to become more known as the local expert in Lake Country? And those are two very, very different things. So if you would have said, I just want to get more energy for Lake Country, I just would have skipped that second set that I just mentioned. I would have said, just dish out all of the leads inside, like in Milwaukee and whatever. And then when you need a quick influx of cash, you go take it yourself. It takes a little bit more time, but like you got to make, you got to make money. But at the same right. note, we got to transition as, as the expert in Lake Country. Makes sense. Yeah. So I think if the idea is to build, like I mentioned, if the idea is to build your authority as a real estate coach, then set for yourself a certain amount of time per week. Um, even if you split it up, like a third of the week is managing clients. A third of the week is building up your authority as a, as a real estate coach. And then a third of the week is building your authority as the agent or the real estate professional in Lake Country. That seems like a pretty good way to divvy up your week right there. And, and when you say that... Um is your preferred method of, well, I assume your preferred method is going to be more videos, content that you're putting out there on these different things, right? Well, on you mentioned it before. Where do you go when you need to know something? Right. I'll go to YouTube typically. Yeah. The great news about all of this is that is you're in a harder stage. It's never going to be harder than it is for you right now because you don't have any assets to leverage. But then once you start to build up this asset, like once you start to put video content out there, and then you can start to repurpose that to create your email marketing strategy, to create your Instagram channel, everything like that, then you'll start to build an audience. Then when you have an audience, you can then build a Facebook group and invite everybody to the Facebook group. And then one thing just grows everything. Makes sense. You know, so that I would certainly start with video because that is, first off, the barrier of entry is the, is the biggest with video. So that's, I think, why most people don't do it just because they're too scared to. Right. Um, and it's not like, like just because you've done a video, like I mentioned, this goes into my podcast as well. So it's not like once you've done video, that's all you can possibly use it for. Like you can use it for anything. You know, you can use video for a podcast. You can turn it into a blog, what, whatever the heck you want. Um, but there's certainly nothing more engaging than video. That's for sure. Right. And then it's like, you know, figuring out which topics make the most sense. Obviously, you know, what do, what do people, what do people care about? Yeah. Um, you know, I see a lot of agents I, and I, I, I tell people I only bash on things that I am. So I'm a contractor and I'm an agent. So I bash on both those. Um, Cause I feel like I can. Um, but you know, I see a lot of these agents, they'll put stuff out there on like, Hey, one, two, three main streets for sale. And which is fine. But for the most part of the week, can we put that stuff on Facebook? Who cares? Like, yeah, like I have agents do it to me all the time. I'm like, I'm, I don't care about, it. I'm not buying a house over there. Why do you keep bothering me with it? You're um, bang on. And then also, you know, you get like agents, I'll see them do YouTube videos on, oh, what's the closing process? No one gives a hoot on what the closing process is. They want to know easy. One, two, three. Like you said, you you talked about a three-step process. When you get into a 34-step process of buying a house, I mean, good Lord, that's overwhelming for people. Yep. So, um, you know, yeah, obviously there's all sorts. We can break it down as minute as we want. I mean, when you think about backing out of your driveway, there's a thousand steps you're taking <laughs> to do that. That sounds like but, a very boring YouTube video. Right. <laughs> so, although, yeah, although the five steps to backing out of your driveway, to be honest, probably sounds more engaging than the 35 steps to a closing. <laughs> and, and it might be, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. But I think that you hit on something that's really, really important to note. And I was actually going to talk about it next, but I think it I think it relates to what we're currently talking about of building your reputation and your authority as a coach in real estate is how do you actually go ahead and find the information that people are looking for? And so I think right. when it comes to being known just as an example, when you said nobody's searching for content inside of Lake Country, that's fine because you don't need them to be looking up content in Lake Country specifically. But when I asked you, for example, there was a reason I asked. I said, why do people move to Lake Country? And you said to get out of the city. OK, Makes sense. so a YouTube channel, for example, called Lake, Lake Living or Living in Lake Country. And you could talk all about what that looks like. And then now all of a sudden. You're not just looking for, you're not just attracting people that are searching for, I want to move to Lake Country or whatever the name of the city is that you're in. I can't, I can't pronounce it, but that is so at the end of the buyer journey. You're getting them way at the beginning. I'm a little right. bit overwhelmed. Where else can I live in Wisconsin? Beautiful areas to live in Wisconsin. That's something that they might search up. And then yeah, you can talk about, live. 
Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So if you think about it, this is really just to keep digressing for a moment. This is really the, the idea of a lead magnet is how do you start the conversation earlier than anybody else? Because in marketing, it's really just like the one who wins is the person who can start the conversation earlier than anybody else and keep the conversation going for the longest. Right. Like think about a relationship, for example. It's very simple. If you meet the person first and then you don't mess it up, you marry the person. That, that's how it goes. So if you meet the person first and then you don't mess it up, they will work with you. So Makes where sense. are they currently as early as possible? Where can you find them? And I think that the first step that people take before they move to a place like Clay Country is they search in Google areas to live in Wisconsin or beautiful areas to live in Wisconsin or how can I get away from the city or what can my house, what can I buy for what my house is worth elsewhere? You know what I mean? Right. Yep. So the question then becomes, like you just mentioned, how do you find that content? So the same method that you're going to be using to find the content for building your authority as a coach is going to be the same method that you're going to be using to create content for building your authority as the realtor in Lake Country. And that is as follows. Very simply, find out where your customer avatar is. So for me, my avatar is a realtor called Lynette. So every day when I want to search up content, I go into Facebook groups like Real Estate Mastermind Facebook group, and I literally just scroll and I find questions that people like Lynette have asked inside of that group. So for example, hey, I just became licensed. Can anybody please tell me what the heck I'm supposed to do now? Hey, I just moved into a new city with no sphere of influence. How can I start getting business? Right? Does anybody have any good for sale by owner scripts I can use? Has anybody ever tried working with assisted living communities? These are all questions that Lynette would ask. And how do I know? Because I'm in quote unquote Lynette's Facebook group where Lynette would congregate. And I'm just looking for questions that people are asking. So that is essentially how you make it very, very simple to create content that you know will be engaging to your avatar. So I think that it's important to make two avatars. The avatar for meaning the realtor avatar that you're trying to attract to your team. And then separately, the avatar that you're trying to attract who might be moving into Lake Country. So I think the question is the same either direction, either way. What is the realtor asking that if you answered, you become the authority? And then next question is, what is the person who lives in Milwaukee who might want to move to Lake Country? What are they asking? And that's literally a YouTube video. Each of those things are YouTube videos. And you answer them in the context of the framework that you've already created. So for example... Right. For example, when it comes to brand, how do I build up my brand? Right. I'm a new agent. Nobody knows about me. What do I do? I would then answer that question saying, if you're a new agent and nobody knows about you, the, here are the three steps that I would that I would follow that I would do following my three part scale engine framework of brand automate scale. And then I'd answer it. And then by answering that question, they're introduced. Now I've started the conversation about my in a box scale engine framework. They've engaged with me. They've seen that it works. They understand the steps. And once they've seen that, they come back for more content and they keep on coming back for more. And the more and more and more that happens, obviously, the more they'll see me as the expert. That's how it works in any industry, any demographic, any niche. That's how it always works. And and just uh, kind of hash in on that a little bit. So the way that you're talking about doing that is a lot of times it's um, it's on Facebook. Is that correct? Like that's where you're seeing a lot of the group stuff like. Yeah, interactions. I I love Facebook so much. And again, it really does depend where your avatar is at. I know that my avatar, Lynette, does spend a lot of time on Facebook and groups. And so it's very easy for me to find questions that Lynette would ask inside of Facebook groups. However, with your avatar, for example, the, I don't know, let's call him John, right? So John is tired of the city and he wants to move to Lake Country. Where would John be? Maybe there's Facebook groups all about living in Lake Country. But the other thing is, is there's different Johns in various places. So for example, where I live, Muskoka is like cottage country here, right? So I would even join a Muskoka Facebook group, like living in Muskoka, hear what people over there are talking about, and then just repurpose that or create basically similar content, but for my own late country, right? Or for your late country. So one of the other things I heard a, a guy talk about was, so go onto YouTube, check out some videos in that area, um, and then go into the comments. Yeah. Because once you start jumping in the comments, you're going to see all the things that that video missed, right? Like, because they're going to ask questions specifically like, hey, great, but what about this? What about that? And then you can make a new video that answers the biggest, you know, biggest link that's missing in those maybe. Does that make that's sense? Also, yeah, absolutely. That's also a really good idea. I think the idea is, is wherever you're going to look for these places, like you said, like, would they generally be on Facebook? It doesn't really matter where they actually are. There's only two things that do matter. Number one, where are they actually? 
And number two is wherever you're looking, it has to be like a community type place. So you wouldn't like there's websites like Answer the Public, for example, which will tell you what people are searching online. The problem with websites like that is it doesn't really tell you who's searching it. So you have right. to deduce the kind of person. But if you go to a community where you know these are the types of people that congregate in this community, then you now see what people would be asking their friends because that community is essentially a giant friendship. And so right. you answer the questions, the intimate questions that they only really felt comfortable asking to their friends of the community. You're kind of just leapfrogging everything else, right? You're not, you don't have to talk about real estate. It's just, what are you asking your friends about? Because I can help you with that. And you, I mean, it's, it's like, it's just, it's like a cheat code almost. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and the groups are nice because, you know, then you're not being the salesy, you're like you're just answering it. You're just being the friend. You're answering the question. You're helping them out. They've got a question. You're answering it, those kinds of things. And obviously that can branch off into a diff bunch of different uh, areas and directions. Um, but then it's also going to give you a lot of content so that you can be like, hey, you know what? I just did a whole video series on that. Here, why don't you check it out kind of thing. So Exactly. Sense. Exactly. And I think that also what you just mentioned there is like, hey, I just did a whole video series. Like, let's say after you've made the video, it doesn't end there. So I go into real estate mastermind Facebook group and I see people talking about how are you using chat GPT in your business? Of course, I go into my YouTube channel, I copy and paste my link and I say like this, I send it over to them. They like it. They go, Hey, that was a great video, dude. Loved it. And I go, awesome. Thanks. Happy you enjoyed it. How long you've been in real estate for? And I just start more conversations like that. It's a really simple right. conversation starter, but as long as I'm starting from a position of value, again, addressing where they actually are by giving the information and the stuff that they actually want, not what I want them to want, but what they want. The conversation is just an easy conversation. You're not a salesperson. You're not soliciting them. You're just giving them stuff. So of course they'll talk to you. Why wouldn't they? What kind of jerk is just going to be like, just ghost you after you've just given them a bunch of free stuff. That, that's why in my Facebook group, I don't know if you're in there, but in our Facebook group, like, we just give away so much stuff. Why? It's actually a business strategy because the best way for me to start a ton of great conversations is by just giving away a ton of great stuff. And the better my stuff is, the better my conversations are going to be. It's very, very simple and highly effective. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, a lot of people, you know, say, say this thing, like, give away the best stuff and sell the rest kind of thing. I think I can't remember what guy said that, but it's like, give it all away for Gary free. Vee. Yeah, probably either Gary Vee or Tom Ferry or someone like that. But, um, but yeah, it's, they give away so much stuff and then people want to give back too. So it's just mm -hmm. part of the human nature is like, well, you gave, you gave, you gave. So, you know, rather than asking, cause you see a lot of agents like, Hey, if you're looking to buy or sell a house, remember me. And it's like, okay, that's like yeah. generic. What did you give them? Oh, <laughs> there's, a sales also, pitch. there's no better way for somebody to forget about you than by telling somebody you want to buy a house. Remember me? Like, <laughs> nope, nope, absolutely not. <laughs> And it, it's, it's just like, it just keeps on happening. And it's, it's very simple to be honest. Just like, think about what they want and then go and give them what they want so they can start the conversation before anybody else and then follow up with them in a way that is enjoyable to them and not creepy and not spammy. And then they'll engage with you when they decide that they want to engage with you. It's really like not a very complicated process. And I think to be honest that the final two steps of the three parts that we were just talking about, right? The three things is step one is delegate the business out for a referral fee. Step two is build your own, own authority in, in real estate as a coach. And then that was step two. And then step three is build your authority as the real estate professional in Lake Country. The final two of those three steps is basically the same thing. Just build your authority using multiple channels. And if it starts with Google, if it starts with YouTube, then so be it. But that means that your next step is free up as much time as possible so that you can start building up your reputation and authority and then create two YouTube channels, one called Living in Lake Country and one called, I don't know, Shane System, whatever, whatever you want to call right. it. The coaching side of it. Yeah. Right. Exactly, exactly. And then the next step, like because YouTube is generally speaking, it's pretty like sporadic. So like it's very specific questions, but the whole framework, the whole process, you're not going to provide your entire course on YouTube because that's just not the place for it. And it also is what you're ending up selling that like that's that's the upsell at the end of the day. So when they engage with enough of your content and bits and pieces that they really like and you help them in enough areas they just eventually will say, you know what? I'm all in. And I'll just say, what are you selling? What's your course? And that is the easiest sale to make. And that's how I think if I were you, that would be the next step is first up, free up as much time as possible and then focus on building two separate brands and make sure that you have time for each of these. Because if you have right. to one, if you have to both of them, neither are going to work. 
Right. Right. So Makes each sense. one of these things would have a system. So um, that that is basically what I would do from start to finish in your business. Does that sound like something that you could do? It does. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So do you feel again? So this is kind of the big overarching question. Like I mentioned, the goal of this podcast is to is to help you feel empowered and like you kind of know the next step to actually go ahead and scale your business. Do you feel like we've accomplished that goal today? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I I was. I wasn't sure what I was getting into and, you know, when we first started talking about doing this and, uh, and the fact that you hammered down on kind of what is it that I'm looking for, because obviously, you know, we get an idea, we kind of run with it. Yep. Um, and you kind of lose, you kind of lose the fact that, yeah, this is what I want or this is what I want. So yeah, I appreciate that. My pleasure, man. So all the strategies and ideas discussed in this episode were made possible by Innobox and the Scale Engine Framework. If you'd like to learn more about how you can scale your real estate business to the next level, you might want to check out Innobox. It's a coaching program and CRM designed exclusively for realtors. Our team of experienced professionals and coaches will guide you through a proven three-part scale engine framework to help you scale your business and achieve success just like you heard on today's episode. In a box includes one-on-one -on -one coaching, access to a private community of like-minded realtors, a variety of resources and tools to help you scale your business, the complete three-part scale engine blueprint for you to follow at your own leisure, one of the most comprehensive and simple-to-use CRMs on the market, and way more. Don't let your competition get ahead. If you're ready to scale, then now is the time to invest in yourself and your business with Innobox. Go to goinabox.com to learn more and sign up today. And if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, send an email to myself at oliver at goinabox.com and let me know why you think you'd be a good fit. It's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you next time.